So hello and welcome to this beautiful series of the Dancing Dialogue. I'm very pleased and happy and excited to have beautiful Georgia here with me today. We had just this amazing click, I want to say, this beautiful harmony of coming together and being able to share and explore new things together. So the Dancing Dialogue is a very natural flow from that amazing connection. So today we're looking in the Dancing Dialogue about relationships and also how the new archetypes, the emerging archetypes that are coming up, how they can support us in relationships as they are evolving, as they are emerging, as we have the courage to put a new spark, as we have the courage to look at them from different perspectives. So dear Georgia, I leave it all up to you to tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection with relationships. Well, I don't believe that phrase that we are rocks and we are islands and we have to live on our own and be hermits. No, we have to blend with each other and live with each other and love each other and develop all kinds of relationships from the five minute ones to the 500 year ones. We need each other. We humans flourish and thrive when we're together. We support each other. We give each other accountability. We give each other feedback, love of all the different flavors that love comes in. Relationships are the key to survival, especially in these crazy upside down world we live in. You look at us connecting from across the seas, across the world, across the land, the mountains, where are you? You are, you're over there in the jungle. <laughs> and I think this is fantastic. Look how we've connected and how we share this, you know, thread, big fat thread <laughs> of a, relation, a new relationship, you know, and how it's going to develop and grow and change and what we can give. Because, you know, I always say our voice, and our pen are our two most powerful tools of communication. And we need to use both. We need to be confident, courageous, and creative to use both. The pen, well, I love pencils, you know, but a lot of people <laughs> type stuff and, you know, they let it all flow on the screen. I love all type fountain pens and I love to write them. Nice. So thank you for making that relationship. Relationship is not only with people that is so beautiful, so inspiring, so unexpected, so extraordinary. But it's also sometimes the relationship we have with a thing, like a pen, as you said. And the voice, of course, that is not physical on some level. Yes, we need some physical things in order to produce our voice. We need our heart to express our voice. But at the end of the day, the voice is energy. Yeah. And the ability how we are able to connect and relate. And yes, I love that you bring up the pen because we both have something in common, apart from many other things, we both love writing. Mm. And writing for me is also relationship. It can be a record or a perspective or a, a view of how we relate with each other or nature or self, mm. the universe, whatever. And I also would like to know a little bit more how you're using that pen and voice when you inspire others, authors like me. To oh, write. The, the, the way we, you know, when, when I take, when you take or anybody takes that writing tool in their hand, in their fingers, there is this extraordinary magical connection between our head, our heart, our soul, our thoughts, our feelings, and it all comes through our hand onto that device or the paper. It's an amazing thing. It's like you talking to yourself. I mean, sometimes you've probably got that thing where you, you can't write fast enough with the thoughts that are coming out. <laughs> you get that? It's, 
it's fantastic what happens and it is the most wonderful way to self-express yes. to share with the world your message your mission your motto your feelings your experiences your expertise anything and everything in the many different forms that there are and this is what i encourage my budding writers my budding authors you know so many of us have this potential to do it to express ourselves through words and it's so important to find that outlet. Yes, you could do it through dancing, through painting. You can do it through many things, you know, but writing, it, it leaves an impression. It makes an impact. It resonates and it connects people in a very special way because when you read something and it resonates with you, you don't feel so alone. So very true. It feels to me almost like writing is often a bridge. I used to read more in my younger days. Now I prefer to write. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I remember reading The Old Man and the Sea. Ah, Ernest Hemingway. And, and I, I really felt, you know, I was connected. I had a relationship with Ernest Hemingway. Apart from, of course, an 11 year old wants to be like writing like Ernest Hemingway. I want to write like him. But the relationship that came out of this, the truth that came out in his uniqueness to express, as you said, I didn't feel alone anymore. So, yes, writing is, is a beautiful way of expressing, but also of relating. And as you said, you're inspiring people to be unique, to express what's inside of them. And yet, this is a bridge to others. It is. It's, it's very profound. It's true. And often so <laughs> unexpected because you're writing something and you don't really know how it relates and resonates with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yes, you never know how it's going to affect people's lives. And... When you write, as you know, and people give you that feedback and they say, God, those words really made, meant something to me. They helped me move, change, speak, write. You know, it's a great form of motivation and inspiration to others. Or well, it can be, you know, if you take that, find that connection, that thread, you know, from going through up through the hand. It's a wonderful thing. I like the idea of the bridge. That's yes. very true. So <laughs> we were talking a little bit about the bridge and I'm bringing this through. I'm not claiming I, I'm the creator or whatever, but yes, it is original. So the Chakaruna in Quechua means a man or a woman as a bridge. Mm -hmm. And on some levels for me, every writer is a bridge. Yes. If it's a professional writer or a passionate writer or whatever, as soon as you write, you're actually building a bridge to a new way of relating because mm. somebody hopefully will read it. So we talk about this, this archetype of the Chakaruna, the bridge, and I really enjoyed how that flow for us because we come from different perspectives. And it is interesting, apart from wanting to be a musician and a writer as a little boy, the other thing that fascinated me was building bridges. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but if you're looking at bridges, they can be built in such different ways. And they can go into so many different things. But from a relationship perspective, I really feel a bridge is often necessary because we are not all the same. We have life in a different way. We live in different places. And even if we live in similar places, we are unique. On one level, we are alone. It doesn't mean we're lonely. Mm -hmm. But no matter how close we are with someone, we will never be the same. And that we can have these moments when we really understand each other, where we're truly one. Whether this is with us now here, Georgia, or whether it's with our partners, whether this is in a community, friends, wherever, there are moments of bliss 
where that bridge that maybe two people build to each other or mm. more than two people actually meets yes and i'm seeing now something very interesting that i have never considered so th there's so much space in that bridge it's like you build a bridge and i build a bridge and we met somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. so this archetype i feel it, it goes in so many different areas into writing into relationships and many many different things and before we continue i just want to make it clear the distinction between the old archetypes and the emerging archetypes is about the emerging do not have positive or negative expression anymore as they are attuned to a blueprint gold print that is based on love that doesn't have labels, that doesn't have judgment. And so a bridge can be anything you want it to be. Beautiful idea that, you know, we're, we have this bridge between us from where you are in Peru and myself in Spain. And we've built this bridge and we've come together somewhere there, somewhere there, and then we touched. And we're exploring something new and devising something new. And both ends of the bridge are open, so others could join us too. <laughs> yes, and, and this is really the idea, these dancing dialogues, while they happen with two, they are opening up the space for mm -hmm. many more. Mm -hmm. This is not live, people can only make comments but I know that you and I are open to take that wherever it needs to go. Beautiful image. <laughs> yeah, I, I, really, I really appreciate your, your wisdom, your knowledge, your, your heartfelt way of living and way of relating, Georgia. I think it's very, very extraordinary, very special. <laughs> And I feel if we put more into relationships, into what we have in common, this is something they teach, of course, in intercultural relationships and inter whatever, but it's more than that. It's coming back into harmony in a relationship and not into what separates us. How can I play this and that and the other? Not being attached, allowing everyone who is part of a relationship to surprise each other you know i feel that if we were taught from an early age that we have more in common than we have different we would all have more relationships <laughs> yes. and of course the other part is why does difference need to be a conflict mm -hmm. Everybody is free to go their own way. And if we have something in common and we go together, equally beautiful. Mm. I have been in a relationship now, married and all of that for almost 10 years. The first time I managed that long. And it, it is just incredibly beautiful because I am coming more and more into my rhythms together but yet I'm very clear that there is also a Patrick that's unique and that's okay. And it's important, it's important not to lose yourself. And I feel in relationships in general, we are afraid of differences. And we are also afraid of communalities when we could just enjoy each other. Yeah, we have this sort of competitiveness and you know, there's, there's, that, there's always a top to top a top and somebody's got to be the boss and no, you're a team. When you're exactly. together, you're a team. And there it comes also, the, this, this power over these drama games. So you're running on this drama triangle. Sometimes you need to rescue, then you judge, then you are the victim. And this is also part of these emerging architects that we're stepping out of this. Nobody is a victim, nobody is a victor, nobody is a judge, but we come together on that bridge in collaboration, enjoying our differences. 
I think we would all be so much happier if we stopped overthinking and over analyzing and over labeling and just tune in and listen a little bit more so that we can say honestly, um, I don't feel I want to do that today or I think I need to drink some water now or hey, you know what, I'm going to sleep. Whatever it is that the body, you know, if we tune in, then we can be more honest with each other and, and instead of playing all these dramas and yes what's, and I, what, she, what would she say if i am what's he gonna do if i am yes drama i feel what you're also saying now is really that that tuning in with self that relationship with self is something that we also have lost they don't teach us that in school most parents are have not been learning that so they can't share it with us at university they surely don't teach it but really when we start having this relationship within it gets very quiet here yeah, exactly that's what the I mean. mind and the thoughts and even the emotional drama is not who we truly are so when we come within and have this relationship as you said then we can do things without being afraid of offending or not being with somebody or whatever. We truly have this opportunity to be honest, but in harmony. Yeah. Because as we are having this relationship, we give others this opportunity to get out of this craziness. Mm -hmm. It's all up here and to come within and, and have this relationship with self. I always say you have to, because you know, people when they start writing, they get fearful. What's they gonna say? Who's gonna read it? Who's gonna that? What about this? You know, they come up with a thousand and one reasons and excuses to stop doing it. And I always say to them, starve that fear, starve it and feed your belief. How beautifully said. So many people talk about combat and fighting fear. I like how you said that, starve the fear. Yeah. Energetically, if you don't give energy to fear, it's going to starve. Right. And also, of course, the more you feed in fear, the more you have it. You know, it's, it's the other thing, and because both of us have been musicians, we know what it's like. You get up on stage and you've got to, I was an instrumentalist too. So you get up on stage and you've got to play, you've got that solo coming up and you've got all these butterflies there just going like this. And I always say, just let those butterflies free. Find your way. Some people meditate, some people jump up and down, some people dance, whatever it is, let them free. And there's that moment where that nervousness, that fear is exciting and scary. It's a delicious moment. <laughs> yeah, again, I, I could have not expressed it more, more beautiful yes, than you have. And we have again this communality. You've been in Jamaica, I'm Jamaican more or less. And we have both been on stage. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I know exactly what you mean with these butterflies. Um, <laughs> for me it was often even when i started teaching it's it's a similar feeling right yeah and it was almost like i felt like i was flying with the butterflies <laughs> and also when you play an instrument as you know or when you sing it's like these butterflies they are your friends mm. and also if you talk to actors who are acting on stage maybe more than in a movie they all have this beautiful yeah. experience of bringing their true expression yes. of their art to relate to an audience. So again, we're back in relationships. What a beautiful thing to relate to others. Of course, we're living in a time of spectators and all of that, but a true connection with an audience it's delicious it's divine it's fresh 
And we, you know, I think we all have that ability to do it if we could get rid of all the sin, modern, modern syndromes and limiting this is and that and all that overthinking and overanalyzing stuff. We all have the ability to shine. If you think about when, you, you know, most of us were four, five, six years old, we were like, yeah, playful and out there and yeah. And, and that all changes, you know, like sit yeah. still, don't move. Yeah. I am a happy fidget box. <laughs> <laughs> it's that pleasure, that, that in, uh, indescribable sense of being here for me. In whatever form, in whatever expression you feel, it's just being here. And I feel in a way, I had to learn that again. I had to reconnect to that being here again. Because as you said, as a six-year-old and three-year-old, you're jumping around and you are here. You are fully present. And then they tell you, don't do this and don't do that and don't do the, the other. And this is the way you, it needs to be. And you're losing that way of being here. And I feel when you're here, you're also focused. So you have an opportunity to relate. I think there's a song that says, stop the world, I want to get on. But I always say, stop the world, I want to get off. <laughs> Move into another world. How <laughs> oh, beautiful. There's your choice. There's your choice, you see. And that's also the bridge. That is also the bridge. So the metaphors, and of course, they're very important in writing. I feel they are such a treasure. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica, as you know, because you've been to Jamaica, you lived there for a while. In Jamaica, we love metaphors. We call it double meaning. Yes. <laughs> if a word has more than two, three, four, five, six meanings and you can create new meanings, you're just happy. Yeah. Very inventive with language. Very inventive. And create a new word. Create a new mm. meaning. It's, just, it's wonderful. And I think when you're writing, you have the freedom to do that as well. Exactly. And you have the ability to create that language and that relationship with a language that hopefully reaches other people's heart. Yeah. It's the same like with music, maybe not exactly the way you have intended it, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how it resonates in the heart. It matters that it does. And here I want to talk again very quickly about this overanalyzing. Everything has to be analyzed. What is, what is really the benefit of overanalyzing or overlabeling? Nothing. If you know why, that doesn't change anything. Yeah, I think too many people are, grow up with this idea that if you want an answer for this topic, then you go to that person. If you want an answer for this topic, you go to that person. Well, why don't you question it yourself? And, and anyway, Patrick, half the time they're guessing. They don't know themselves. They're being paid to push something on you. Find out for yourself. Yeah. Tune I'm in. Happy that Tune you bring in. that up. I feel we have become dependent. Mm -hmm. on other people's analysis, on other people's yes. opinion, that yes. we're seeking experts on the outside who often have as little proof as you and I. Guessing. And it's a guessing work. And I was, I was remembering and referring to an experience I had with my mother yes. in her 90s. She's still in her 90s. She was very mm -hmm. sick the last time we were with her. She was in hospital and we thought we were losing her. We didn't lose her. I said many times no to surgeries, but what was the interesting part here that in one conversation with a beautiful, beautiful doctor, we were talking about, so what's the real reasoning? What's the real facts behind diagnosis? And we both together mm -hmm. came to the conclusion it was an educated guess. <laughs> so I feel, many in their 
best intent or not best intent, making educated guesses mm -hmm. at situations that consider us. And as you said, for me too, it's very important that I make decisions and choices for myself. Mm -hmm. And really nobody knows what is for me. Very true. And so I really loved how you expressed that, how we're going to this person for that and that person for another who have done whatever analysis. Well, as an academic, I know what you can do with analysis. Um, you know, it's very interesting. I think that um, for me, it's when I see a, somebody in a white coat, the white coat brigade, I think, why am I, why would a person go to some, why do you have to go to a professional? Why can't we come back to those relationships? Why can't we turn to the wiser older people who have experience of these things, for example, or mummies who have masses of experience, you know, or daddies as well, but mummies usually a little bit more on the practical side, yes. who have so much experience with caring. You know, the three most important things that you should teach at school is cooking, cleaning and caring. Mm -hmm. Cooking for yourself and other people so you can survive caring for yourself and other people so you can survive and cleaning your own bloody mess up <laughs> yes the three most important, and, and learn to read and write okay and play music and dance exactly <laughs> and that's it <laughs> and yeah i really love that because i think it's so much at the essence of everything cleaning up means also cleaning up the mental yes Yes, in the widest, widest sense of the exactly. word. Exactly, <laughs> and also I feel the emotional rubbish. Mm. So in my, my traditions of, of shamanism, it is like emotions are only the festered feelings. So feelings are happening all the time. If we don't hold on to them, they're just going. This is also the practical mother. This is the practical cleaning that the body yes. does. But if I'm holding on to feelings, then they're going to hold on. They're going to get strong and maybe even in a form. And so the cleaning, not only in a physical sense, this is also my mess. It's important to clean it. If you do that through exercise, if you do that through meditation, whatever, it doesn't matter. The caring for self, I feel, is also something that we just oh, it's big. It's huge. And also the caring for others, which goes beyond the buzzwords of emotional intelligence and yeah. empathy. The true caring for self and others. Such an amazing gift. Yeah. So education is yet also to be reinvented to, to I feel, come into this harmony with, with, with life. And as you said, also, yeah, who, who, has, who has really the knowledge about me? The mummies have maybe much more knowledge than somebody in a, in a white jacket or whatever. Yeah. So I really, I'm fully, 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 fully with you. And, and for me, the relationship with nature, living here, the relationship with myself, the relationship with my partner, the relationship with you and all the other precious people I have. This is important to me. Yeah. And These it's are... important to nurture and cultivate. Yes. Yes. And, you know, people always say, oh, I haven't got time. I haven't got time. But if you put energy and love into your relationships, you receive so much. And maybe this is where the abundance begins and where the bounty begins in relationships. As we are giving and receiving, we're coming into that natural flow. And then we always have abundance. Yes. We are separated from abundance because we're living in a mindset. I don't like mindsets, but... Um, I know what you mean. I use it too. <laughs> yeah, of scarcity. Yeah. Where yeah. is scarcity? Scarcity happens when you misuse resources or call something a resource like a human that has nothing to do with a resource. 
and it's very closely related to fear. They feed exactly. each other. They feed. So you've got to fear. You've got to starve the fear and starve the scarcity. <laughs> and then you can be in this beautiful energy and receive these new. Let me call it gold prints because they are mm. more blueprints. The gold prints of these new archetypes. Yeah, I I really enjoy our dancing dialogue, and I'm really looking forward to the next one. Yes. And I really enjoy how easy it is to flow with you and, and what we could cover and bring out about relationships today yes. and this bridge building and we also did a lot of weaving which is another <laughs> archetype and, and, and of course the seed of love I feel was also very present as you as you plant the seed of love and you are a seed of love you can starve the fear and the scarcity and even the separation to come back and into harmony. Feed, feed the belief. Yes. Feed the faith. Feed, feed the love. Feed faith and feed the love. I feel that that is a very beautiful message from today. So, dear Georgia, I'm so blessed Thank to be you, with Patrick. you today. <laughs> and I'm sure our audience will enjoy our beautiful dancing dialogue today about relationships. Sure. And we are, of course, very open for your comments, for whatever you want to share with us. And I'm looking forward to be back with you for the next Dancing Dialogue. Blessings and Have so much love. Yes.